press the bell icon on the YouTube app to never miss a video from News Laundry. Welcome to News Laundry Chota Hafta. For the full episode, subscribe because it is behind the paywall and only subscribers get access to uncut, complete content. News Laundry Hafta is our weekly wrap of all that made the news, all that didn't and all that should have and all that shouldn't have. We agree, we disagree, we critique and occasionally we beat each other up. But it's all good fun. Subscribe. This is a News Laundry podcast and you're listening to NL Hafta. Angrez apna lagan aur news laundry apna hafta kabhi nahi chhodte. Welcome to Hafta where we discuss what made the news, what didn't, what should have and stuff like that. We have a guest joining us from Bombay today, Supriya Nair. Let me first introduce our guest. Supriya is a journalist based in Mumbai. She currently writes a sports column for the Mumbai Mirror. Wow. So are you interested in cricket at all, Supriya? Uh not anymore. Oh, you were? I mean it's it's reading too hard. <laughs> okay. But is is cricket a sport or a game? Oh, that's a good question. It is definitely a sport. Okay. What do you think the difference is between a sport and a game? No, if I start telling you all the listeners will start abusing me because they say I really nichodo no, this. No, neither a sport you or go a game. You're too hard on this. I I uh, I Right, I, it's both. I nichodo this mudda too much. No, I don't agree, but maybe we'll talk a bit about this cuz we're talking about a sport or a game it's in time. War. It's war. Madhu says neither sport or game. It's war. All right. Okay. Uh-huh. So yeah. Well, we know a lot of people who'd agree with you this that, week, Madhu. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, then, uh, so you also write for Mint, Scroll. You've been published in New York Times, The Atlantic, Vogue, and Wisden. She's held the position of associate editor at The Caravan and has been the national editor at Brown Paper Bag, a marketing and advertising website. And she's an alumni of University of Mumbai. She also edited the Caravan's book of profiles that explores personalities of 13 of the most prominent people in the global political scene. So, uh, before Manisha gives us the menu of all that we will discuss, not all, but what made the news, I have a very important announcement. The Media Rumble is back in August 2019 on the 2nd and 3rd of August at India Habitat Center. It's going to be bigger than last year, which was bigger than the year before that. those who attended the media rumble would remember we had some spectacular sessions so this time we have some highlight speakers we have gulzar we have arun puri we have swara bhaskar milen khandekar vivian shiller who has formerly headed the npr and also uh, civil media we have prakash raj coming we have shekhar gupta entry is of course free for subscribers because when you pay to keep news free you get some added benefits like you get to attend these events without having to buy a ticket the rest will have to go and subscribe uh, to register uh, the registration link will be b- below this but otherwise you can just go to the media rumble on our website and you can buy tickets there so on that note uh, in case you have any issues not being able to sub- uh, buy tickets you can just email us at contact@newslawney.com at and uh, what do we have as far as the news is concerned manisha i've been traveling so i have not mm. been so much in touch but yes. i will start with an anecdote we after were she's in given Morocco, the menu yeah. having fun as always i was having fun in morocco <laughs> i went on work मेरी औकात नहीं है मोरोका का टिकट खरीदने की मुझे कोई वहाँ कॉन्फ्रेंस हो रही है मुफ्त मुफ्त खो रही हूँ अपनी औकात कहाँ की मोरोका की टिकट खरीदूंगा कोई बोलता है आके बोल दे मैंने कहा ज्ञान पेल दूंगा मुझे टिकट दे दो दे देते मैं कहा जाता हूँ तो इन केस इनियफ यू वॉन्ट मी टू पेलो ज्ञान जस्ट गिव मी टिकट आई कम यू Because Tan- Tangier is civil on a part of it. So tell me, Manisha, what what happened in India? So um, not a great week for journalists in UP. Three journalists were arrested uh, by UP police: Prashant Kanojia, Anuj Shukla, and Ishika Singh. The arrest came because uh, Prashant, at least, what he did was he tweeted a video of a lady who claimed to be having an affair with Yogi Adityanath. She seemed a bit not well. He tweeted that video, and the police came uh, to their to his house, Prashant's house, in civils. they didn't give him an arrest warrant and they arrested him there was a protest against this uh, the supreme court called the arrests completely arbitrary they said you may not like the tweet but you cannot arrest him for it he was released meanwhile rahul gandhi called adityanath uh, said adityanath was behaving foolishly for this bjp called him a hypocrite rightly so because in karnataka he's his government is in coalition with jds Mm. which has also gone after journalists in Karnataka another terrible video came out from UP where a journalist was thrashed by railway cops and he said uh, that uh, uh, when the cops took him to the police the entire station beat him up and they also urinated in his mouth he wants action he wants all of them suspended for now only the um, one of the cops has been suspended in this case but this this video was doing the rounds all over yeah. it was very very disturbing 
Katwa verdict came out this week. Six were found guilty of gang rape murder of an eight-year-old child. Um, the seventh one, who was the main accuser's son, was let go. And there's the eighth one, they're still, uh, they're still determining whether he'll be tried as a juvenile or not. Hmm. The girl's family said that they wanted death penalty for the culprits. And they will be appealing. I think they will be appealing to the higher court. And did the, the, convicts. the ecosystem, which is always apologetic for any... Hindu and says only the Muslims are responsible. You know that whole shit of just yeah. even children who yes, are raped and murdered. Yes, this was particularly is a, a terrible week because uh, before the Katwa verdict, we've had another crime, a very ghastly crime in Aligarh, where our reporter Ayush Tiwari went. A two year, two and a half year old girl child was brutalized and murdered, and the two accused in the case were Muslim. So uh, there was a lot of clamor ki Kathua ke case mein you were holding placards why aren't you maybe we can discuss that in detail that was kind sure. of but yeah there was a lot of Kathua Aligarh comparison across news channels and uh, so basically we have really hit rock bottom yeah, on basic using, humanity yeah, we have yeah, yeah, fucked yeah. sorry Madhu for <laughs> use of that language hmm. and well people like Madhu Kishwar are still calling the verdict flawed and uh, Sudhir Chaudhary said that it's because of Z News that the <laughs> that hmm. the verdict came uh, there's a doctor's strike in West Bengal. More than 70 doctors across West Bengal hand in resignations as strikes continue for the fourth day. And they are basically, they want better security because doctors are getting thrashed by relatives and stuff who are dissatisfied with that. So they, they ask for security, am I right? Is that what yeah. hmm. the Bengal doctors ask yeah. for? And she is issued an ultimatum in four hours you join or not. It has become a nationwide strike you know, now. She's a bit, a bit much, Mamta. No, you know, but this violence against doctors is happening across the country, yeah. Yeah. particularly in smaller towns. Um, a hospital in Delhi, which used to be called Willingdon Hospital, is now called Ram Manohar Lohia, Ram Hospital. Nohar Lohia Hospital. There, the doctors have a, a planned exit from the back. That in if case, violent yeah. families or patients come, there's a gali se nikal ke bhag jau. Right. Because this is a regular occurrence. Mm. And there's a lot of footage on uh, YouTube of doctors being thrashed really, really badly. So, ha- so haven't anyone like Jaggi and all said, so what this happens all over the country, why is, why is Mamta being picked on? They haven't said that, the usual uh, Hindu nutters? It has become a nationwide... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just surprised. <laughs> since, since everything has always been happening, so what's the big deal, you know? Mm. So, so anyway, huh, carry on. No, and... Um, water scarcity. Water scarcity in India. This is it. Your annual theme in India yeah. there's, water, there's water scarcity water and scarcity it's and floods in Mumbai tearing mm. and Chennai. there's supposed to be a really at least in Maharashtra the situation seems very dire mm. meanwhile the uh, union minister has said it's just media hype Gajendra Singh which I don't think at all because none of the media is talking about it I've only seen shows in India today Mira Now and NDTV who are talking about it so I don't know what he means by media hype uh, Girish Karnad passed away, an actor, a playwright, really a renaissance man and one of my favourite playwrights. Really? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, you can't go to a play done, written by him and not be changed. Really? I saw Tughlaq last Spectacular Sunday. playwright. I mean, I didn't I've know read all his plays. Happen, and, but I saw yeah. Tughlaq last hmm. Sunday. Because he used tradition, but he dealt with modernity. Okay. And also, I mean, I've read his plays in English and it just doesn't seem like a translation. It just seems so Indian. I mean, the language is so beautiful. It just doesn't feel awkward that these ancient people are talking in English. Like it's very... Then an A and 32 aircraft that had gone missing, the wreckage has been found and apparently there are no survivors. I yeah. saw people on Twitter saying how come there has been no tweet or statement about these people by either the Home Minister or the Defence Minister uh, the defense minister, I think, it reacted, uh, or the prime minister, I said, now that elections are over. Uh, yeah. We also then, had a terrible report by Z where they claimed that aliens have abducted this plane. <laughs> Did you miss that? You weren't but here? But why is that terrible? I know, that's <laughs> an excellent report. <laughs> I mean, come on, Z, man. They, come they, on, what are you doing? They, they, aliens? It's because of them, we may also find what aliens. And the report is just that it's not a gap, so there are no aliens. That's the only aliens conclusion. Aliens abandoned after 13 days. <laughs> uh, and Arvind Subramanyam's column, which says that there is completely our GDP figures all warped, right, from not just NDA, but even the UPA time, uh, which is unsurprising in my view. Then Mamta Banerjee, when she's not fighting with doctors in a state she unveiled the Vidya Sagar statue in Kolkata's college last month after the vandalism and 12 tax officials are to retire amid allegation of corruption I don't know why they made to retire and I you know, know why don't they go to jail honorable Hello? exit and one of these people is the one 
who we had interviewed who is in my view mentally unsound i don't think he should be retired because <laughs> of corruption him. you yeah. did that interview you know and and not totally did, she, not did she interview him he <laughs> called me up and said why didn't i interview him how dare someone other than junior. me send a junior i said she knows more than me because she started agreeing with and, and i said she's smarter than i am so i don't know what beyond the point i just couldn't argue with him he's off yeah. in the head well, so i think beyond sh- the point there should be no point he should have been retired on on medical grounds that he's yeah. insane i just like i think madhu kishwar is you know and i'm not saying this in jest i think it is some, there's something deeply worrying about a society where mentally unsound people like general bakshi that guy who's sitting in a car who speaks for the congress mm, what's oh his god, name oh my god amit verma yeah His name is Amit Verma. Is it Amit Verma the columnist? Nishant. Nishant Verma. Nishant Verma. Oh, Amit Verma is a very honourable no. person who has been on board. Nishant Verma. <laughs> Nishant Verma. Nishant Verma. Nishant Verma. Madhu Kishor. These people sit on panels and are opinion makers. And Madhu makers. Kishor comes on election days as a political and analyst. I can guarantee you, she is mentally unsound. I have interviewed her as you have Madhu when she got up, did a twirl, and sat down again. <laughs> That was such fun. Twice. She said, "I'm going. I'm 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 So, uh, so how do you call it circulating her cell, the wire on her cell and then sat down again <laughs> and then uh, there was the news channel crew was shot at by men on a motorcycle in delhi yeah so more good news for journalists and the enforcement directorate has filed money laundering case against raghav behel the founder of quint uh, and he is being hounded for doing the wrong is what he says he's paid his taxes the case is that he bought a property in the uk and legally an individual an indian citizen can invest up to 2 and a half lakh us dollars overseas the value of the property is less than that and him and his wife they can easily transfer that much money so i personally don't know what the big deal about this case is to me it does seem like hounding but there are other cases that are on him that may be on solid ground so let me start now let's get to the journalism aspect madhu there have been a series of attacks on journalists and journalism around the country Uh, in one case in Karnataka, there have been police complaints because Kumar Swami's son-in-law mm. or son they said something about son. This we discussed, I think, two hours ago. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just throwing that in yeah. with the this guy who was beaten up by the railway police. Then in UP, um, Mr. Aditanath's police the, again was arrested. This guy who the Supreme Court released. Uh, I was told I'm not on this editors group. I don't know if you're on that WhatsApp group, but someone at this conference who's on this editors group was saying that on. all these messages that are passed on there are many editors in fact he named jaggi saying that oh this has been happening for so long why are we making such a big deal about this have has partisanship among journalists becomes reach such an extent that you know people have been getting arrested or i guess people have been getting murdered also for so long or raped also for so long yeah, so yeah exactly i mean Actually, are you a part of any on... such group where this is being normalized no you're touching on a, a point that has been troubling me for a long time not only on the journalist arrest on the partisanship in journalist arrest as you are mentioning but also in the partisanship of incidents that have happened like rapes any kind of violence we've seen that facts are twisted and changed around in fact we've got a story on news laundry on this hall of fame fake news hall really of fame really good story yeah so i think this at least right now it has become legitimate to be partisan in everything everything that you look at has to be from a partisan is okay to look at it from a partisan point of view so that i think is has been a really unfortunate trend everything is colored now if you have an opinion or which are based on on facts and it just doesn't matter what the facts are your loyalties are going to decide how you how you view your facts but and you've been in this space for a long surprised. time is it is this a new occurrence or even this has been happening forever no I mean, this is a new occurrence it, completely because there happened? might have been a sort of a hypocritical front in some areas but mostly there was an attempt to be objective there was a division as you know between editorial and marketing that was muddied by times of india when marketing decided what was going to be written about So, so it's no but uh, even I, during I think, those emergency days were pe- uh, were the pro congress journalists also up in arms as much as no the, in, in you see what people forget about the emergency is that the only people who went to jail or protested against the emergency were 0.1% of the population the just among journalists i'm saying on mm. journalists as well as politicians 0.1 people percent of the 
population went to jail the rest of the country was carrying on with their normal lives quite happily supporting indira gandhi happy that the trains are running on time happy that the corruption was down with the bureaucrats so you know to imagine that the emergency was people who were galvanizing were, force yeah galvanizing like force and the whole country came down on the streets nobody came out on the streets okay it was very very minuscule and small so in the same sense and so there were the majority of the people were supporting the government overtly except as you know uh, one or two newspapers there was no television at the time but the thing is even after that the there was a clear attempt to keep yourself objective the journalists were taught that do not personalize uh, your political opinions into a story whether the journalists will go pick up facts according to their own private political beliefs but at least there were facts yeah but then you an editor will never know when an when a journalist goes and leaves out inconvenient facts and presents only the facts that that push his own political beliefs or leanings so but if it happened too many times to obviously editors would come down hard on journalists hmm. that this person is tainted but, and there was a time when during uh, i think just after vp singh it I, i can't remember the actual period of under whose uh, government it started but there was a time when one started hearing that the government was trying to plant a journalist in every news organization but right. ab to overt ho gaya ab to covert now, now it's hai. public now it's like you know uh, so obvious hmm. but that's the bad part that ab to sharam utar gayi hai exactly Sabki i sharam think sharam utar gayi i think now uh, this is one of the sabki sharam utar gayi hai whether it's on because of twitter language and uh, and obscenities and people just saying whatever they feel like which they wouldn't say to your face uh, also sharam utar gayi hai in trying to be even a pure objective no i think it's also a question of what society values as premium you know now and this is a post liberalization thing monetary reward is the f- is the final is at top of the food chain as far as virtues are concerned and society rewards that as well like for example arnab who we make fun of in nuisance for behaving like a complete buffoon republic was tweeting something that what we considered spoof till the few months ago that watch arnab talk non stop for whatever these 70 <laughs> seconds and he was a completely idiotic sentence and it was and it showed him that was brilliant it showed him in poor light and they put it out as a viral clip viral they, watch so republic put this out themselves so clearly they are not idiots i'm sure even they see the ridiculousness of it but that no 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 you're wrong they do not see the ridiculousness no no madhu an as arrogant as, person with hubris sees even that as great no i think it's because how do you think it went out no no but the thing is that rewards eyeballs which subscriber which which uh, sponsors reward like just like i've discussed this earlier you're crediting them with uh, too much in intelligence okay forget mm. them okay let's mm. say they're stupid mm. subscri- uh, people who sponsor that show like the samsung if they are sponsoring a wall that this is a samsung they're video wall they just look at numbers they just look exactly mm. whereas in the us uh, you know people with bright bart they lost eight sponsors i think tucker carlson's show went off air because of his anti-semitic rants and all the that will not and the same company the same microsoft the same samsung they will withdraw advertising in the us paper for something like that but here musliman bagna pakistan or whatever muzaffar nagar they will not they say theek hai aur rates will go up our society rewards the bangi bhai don't mess with me and that is the ultimate and i think that is what won modi the election as well they reward a man who's tough it doesn't matter how you got tough or whether there's freedom speech even dishonest tough men yeah so so toughness is reward in our culture but coming back to the journalists uh, who were arrested and the up journalist who was beaten up i really i'm very surprised if editors are saying what's the big deal because that video of the guy who was reporting on and he was basically reporting on a racket uh, yeah within, can, can i yeah. just finish what i was saying so the guy who was reporting on the railways uh, he had done a previous report in which he had uh filed a report on the hafta that they collected from yeah. vendors and for that reason he was targeted and he was doing a normal straight report and that is unforgivable what happened to him however the guy who tweeted about yogi adityanath i think his tweet not to justify his arrest of course he should not have been arrested i would protest that but 
I think journalists demean themselves and, and ruin their credibility by responding to uh, an obviously de deranged and delusional woman and playing a joke and writing a joke on Twitter. I think it's cheap and I think it demeans us. But doesn't that shift the conversation? Sorry, Madhu, uh, uh, Anisha, why don't you finish before no, we get no, into this? No, I was this? just exactly saying that the, the guy who was reporting on uh, the railway bracket and you have videos of him getting beaten up very badly, yeah. So I'm very surprised if editors or if Jagia saying this has happened. No, I think he was referring to the earlier one, the yogi one, the yogi arrest. The, yeah, I think the, this was uh, one issue where the editors guild also reacted. I mean, in this one, they did. Yeah. No, but what excuses yeah. has the, been happening all the time? So you, were you? Why didn't you protest before? That's that would be the answer. That if it's been happening all this time, then why were you quiet then? I, I sorry, doesn't Manisha. make it okay. Mm. No, and also everything will be noisier now. Even outrage and protest seem noisier yeah, now because there's Twitter, noisier. there's social media, there's yeah. video. That's like fine. earlier there was no, even if journalists were getting beaten up, there was no video that was viraling. So yeah. And when you see the actual I mean, beating up, it's quite shocking. So Priya, what is your view of why this is this phenomenon? Um, it's, I mean, I think you guys have covered uh, co covered like kind of the roots of the phenomenon. And the thing that I'm curious about, particularly because... Um, I heard someone talk about, uh, you know, editors, WhatsApp groups, and I, I really want to know what the conversation is about this in them, if at all. Look, this is clearly a fact of our life. Um, we've It's been happening historically. It's going to get worse. Uh, some people are suffering real world consequences for the fact that news, as it's produced and talked about online, has lost a great deal of connection with um, with the things that we traditionally think news is supposed to be about, which is facts, logic, reason, etc. What can we do to, I mean, we clearly can't do anything in the short term to stop these arrests from happening or to stop journalists from being persecuted. Is there anything concrete that we can do to to help them? So if there's, if there's a free speech fund that journalists or press clubs or editors guilds can can create to ensure that the minute something like this gets to our attention, there's someone over there getting bail for the journalist to fight the case for him. Yeah, I think her. that's a, that, that's a great idea. One should actually Give work towards that. Give composition to the family in case they're, um, you know, in case they've lost the, in, in case the journalist has been murdered. What do we do about this? I thought we could discuss Aligarh and sure, we could talk it. to Ayush. Ayush yes. Aligarh. So yeah. uh, just lay the context before we get Ayush on. So. Um, there was a murder of a two and a half year old girl in Aligarh and in Tappal actually, a village which is 50 kilometers away from main town Aligarh. And two of the accused, usually just to lay context, uh, in India, a crime, there are about 300 crimes committed against children every day on average. Few of them make it to news. This one, there was a lot of outrage in the beginning because two of the the accused are Muslims. So immediately it was picked on by the right wing outlets as look Muslims are involved in killing a child here and you did so much about Kathwa where Hindus were involved, why aren't you talking about this? So that's how it basically the case got a lot of attention. Of course it was also very barbaric, it, I mean the whole details of the case are pretty gory. And Ayush went there to see how the whole case had taken a communal turn, even though the motives, unlike in Kathwa, like Kathwa, there was a clear communal motive where they wanted to scare the Bakarwal community away from grazing in their pastoral land. So they wanted to create, you know, commit a crime so he needs to drive away a community. There was a clear communal angle. Here it was mostly a, it seemed like a sort of, uh, the grandfather of the girl loaned money to one of the accused. And he didn't return it. And he's also sort of a known criminal. One of the accused is, was also, uh, he had molested his own daughter. So like two really depraved individuals. But motives were not communal. But the crime then uh, turned into it turned into a very communal situation. And, then, and Ayush can come in and tell us so what he was, saw there. So without um, it be necessarily becoming a reporter or honest, because I'm sure you'll discuss this in detail there. Yeah. So make sure people watch, uh, listen to that podcast for that reason. But, sorry. No, sir. I think I'll just ask, uh, I, if we, if you can just reconstruct mm. the communal part of it and where the police was trying to tackle, police was literally begging, uh, you know, yeah. for peace. In fact, he's uh, got so some really good videos got really on that, good which videos. you should check out. So, so you if you can just explain, reconstruct the entire thing. So, uh, I went there to meet the family and actually report on things and get a rather, as Sir said, uh, sir, as sir said recon reconstruct how the murder happened. But after I talked to them and I realized that most of the narrative of the mainstream media on the issue was accurate, I went and met the Pradhans whose uh, house is in the middle of the village. And while we were there, 
while he was interviewing uh, he was talking to some correspondent there's a huge crowd that showed up from uh, the main road the market of the town and uh, they were from the neighboring villages of Tuppal town they were not people living there but from around the place and what i got a sense uh, of the whole issue was that as they came in and they had a huge effigy they were smashing and beating it up and i talked to them and i asked them where are you from how did you were you organized by a political party a group they said no we are self organized and they showed me some whatsapp messages which circulated probably from village to village and very angry 2 300 people and they just first caused a lot of ruckus harass some journalist thoda dhakka ho ka diya times now wale ko and then they just went in the local lanes of the villages and at one point when they reached a very sensitive spot where the muslim community probably lived and you could tell then the chance changed from zahid ko fansi ho zahid is the guy who's accused of raping the the minor yeah. murdering there's yeah. no r- yet we don't know of rape yes uh, of, of of murdering them sorry uh from some zahir ko fasi ho it changed to suwar ko suwar ko fasi ho and it uh, took so that slur came in and when i talked to them they said koi bhi ha they used a derogatory slur the k word for the muslim koi aaya nahi yahan par so and that reflected in the family also they also had a sense of the fact that whenever something happens in that area whenever whenever kid gets missing or someone's kidnapped usually the whole community goes to the police station protests and he said agar musliman ki ladki wahan arrest gayab hoti hai to hindu bhi jate hain lekin is bar hinduon ke sath hua to musliman nahi aaye so i talked to some uh, local people and i couldn't find any muslim over there to talk to because they they weren't ready to talk to me they didn't want to come out of their house even and when i talked to them over phone they said they were scared because of all these men pouring out from neighboring villages almost uh, they were scared and didn't, didn't want to come and talk to people and they said we think of our safety first of course we support punishment but one scene in the police station when i went this mobbed this mob after finally protesting through these narrow lanes reached the police station and the circle officer there mr pankaj shivasa tried to calm him down and that's the video that i've shot that's in the piece where he's literally telling them ki aisa kuch mat karna ki baad mein hum sab ko rona pade kyunki bheed mein sare type ko so calm them so um thank you ayush for that wonderful report and you shot video as well which actually answers a couple of the questions that have come later in another email but i just you want to take this opportunity you know uh, ayush went to aligarh i think it was a two or three day trip it wasn't as expensive as some others can be but you know uh, those of you who ask us to do more reports and about how news is working not working i get a uh, you know several such mails a week of some reporter out of our wonderful team to go out and do a report and i have to take a call on can we afford it can i send someone there there's a bus ticket if it's further away there'll be an air ticket the person will stay for 2 or 3 days and uh, you can't keep telling these guys to go stay at a sarai or something or at a gurudwara because at the end of the day they have to digitize the footage i'm sure so you know unless you guys subscribe journalism will die and this i've been saying with fair amount of confidence for a long time advertising does not support journalism it can't it will die unless you click on subscribe and pay to keep news free because when the public pays public is served when advertisers pay advertisers are served and the model is not optimized advertising model for ground reports that it's just the cost benefit analysis of ground report does not make sense in the advertising model so i urge you to subscribe those of you who are listening to this outside the paywall in the free version subscribe listen the whole hafta uh, because you'd be surprised at how journalism impacts your life you may think it doesn't but it does sunli africa mufat khoro not to brag or anything but news laundry hafta features in the top 50 in the world on soundcloud in the news and politics category for podcasts so do subscribe and see what you're missing because when the public pays the public is served when advertisers pay advertisers are served subscribe help keep news independent and free all news laundry podcasts are available on itunes and stitcher and any other podcast platform